Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Yo Gotti's tour bus gets shot up, and Lord Jamar explains exactly why he doesn't mess with Eminem. Young Dolph is trolling us all, and Cardi B says she's gonna slap all her fans. Let's talk hip hop. Alright, so this situation is a little weird, right? So last night, um, Yo Gotti did a concert, right? He did a free concert in Tennessee, right? And that's where he's from. He's from Memphis, but I think he did the free concert like in another city that was in Tennessee, right? Which is cool. Um, so anyway he after he's done the show everything is completely over uh the tour bus is parked uh my man is somewhere else completely like the tour bus is parked turned off ain't nobody in the tour bus or anything like that um and in the middle of the night somebody just comes through and shoots up his tour bus right um almost like if they were trying to send a warning to yo Gotti. like whoever shot up the tour bus definitely knew that there was nobody in there that's like two o'clock in the morning your car is parked outside and somebody shoots up your car right so it's not like they were really aiming for him but they were trying to send a message to him whatever that message was you know i ain't received it because i'm not yo Gotti. but whatever that message was i'm sure that yo Gotti received it loud and clear or maybe he didn't you know what i'm saying but the whole situation is that within like the last week a lot of rappers have been on the receiving end of these bullets you know what i'm saying so um offset studio gets shot up uh hella bands gets shot and killed um and yeah young boy gets shot at um young thug's uh, tour bus gets shot at while he was driving on the highway young thug will tell you that the tour bus didn't get shot at but it damn sure did right uh yfn lucci's car gets shot up but he wasn't driving in it somebody else was you know so all of this is crazy man i, I feel like i don't know if it's the the feds the government crazy ass fans rappers fighting amongst themselves the illuminati you know what i'm saying i don't know what it is that's got these rappers like ducking and dodging bullets but uh these rappers is ducking and dodging bullets man and it ain't cool it ain't fun it ain't cute and if you trying to be a rapper these days i suggest you get you a gun too and that's why that's why Lil Wayne was like, I ain't going to um, to Rolling Out if I can't bring my pistol. That's why, you know, uh, Kodak Black signed off on all that paperwork saying, nah, hell no, I'm not no felon because he was trying to get some guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you a rapper in 2019, you need you a gun. You know what I'm saying? Which is sad. Um, you, really, you need security. You need like 6ix9ine security. But, um... If you can't afford 6 9 security because not every rapper got 6 9 money, then you better go get you a pistol. Now, I'm not promoting violence like that, but I'm all for the Second Amendment and self-defense. So if a nigga trying to come at me and I'm just chilling, you best believe I'm shooting at that motherfucker. But, but, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. My thing about Eminem and all that, and I hate even bringing his fucking name up, but... <laughs> My thing about this motherfucker is you can't crown somebody king and circumvent the true kingdom. You see, like, like white people will, will crown Eminem king because he sold the most records out of all rappers. But when we go into everyday life of black people, the people who are the originators of this shit, we don't fucking listen to Eminem. When you leave black people to their own devices, no one's gonna put Eminem at the top above a fucking Jay-Z or a Nas or any fucking body that we see as our fucking true king. I will say though, in his last album, the content was more mature. It was different. It was none of that your mother type of shit. And it was whack though. It was nothing. It was not whack. It was nothing to listen to. It was fucking whack. I, listen, he did a verse about me. You know how bad I wanted that song to be? Something good? Like, it was whack. It wasn't shit. Alright, yo, so, Lord Jamar, he does this interview, right? Um, and he's talking about a bunch of different things, right? But they asked him about Eminem, uh, because I think he was talking about, like, Little Nas X or something like that, and how country music is protecting itself country music is protecting country music by not letting little nas x be on the billboard country music charts right he can be on the charts but just not the country music charts because they're saying that 
he's a rapper and country music has a certain standard to withhold as far as elements of music and the flow and things like that, right? Which is why uh, Little Nas X even got Billy Ray Cyrus in the song, but still it wasn't number one in the country music charts. It was just number one on the general charts, which is even better than being number one in the country music charts. But you know, I digress, right? So. You know, the interviewer is talking to him, brings up Eminem. He speaks on Eminem, right? Reluctantly, but he speaks on Eminem because he's trying to make his point clear, right? So basically what he's saying is that you cannot have a king of something if Eminem or his people were not the creators or the originators of that art form, right? So hip hop is a black art form, period, right? Point blank, right? Hip hop started in the Bronx. It started, you know, a back to school jam. Uh, DJ Cool Herc was on the ones and twos. Well, he was on the one and then he got himself a two, like right there. Uh, Hip hop is from the brainchild of like house music and disco music and just people in the hood just kind of rocking out to like dope ass beats, right? And that's cool, right? The Beastie Boys, they were white. They decided they wanted to be in hip hop. That was fire, that was dope. And then Eminem is white. He decided he wanted to be in hip hop too. And that was fire too. Nobody said, you know, Eminem can't be a rapper nobody said Eminem is not respected as a lyricist nothing like that right but Eminem is a guest in the house of hip-hop because hip-hop is a black art form right just like you know uh, country music is an art form for certain people and they do not want little Nas X in there and they made that clear in 2019 they made it clear in 2019 Lord Jamar who is a gatekeeper in hip-hop is not even saying we don't want an Eminem we don't want a Paul Wall. We don't want a G Easy. We don't want a Machine Gun Kelly. He's not saying that we don't want white rappers. We're just saying that they have to know that they're guests. So they have to be a little humble and they have to play their position. He cannot be a king of anything if he's a guest in the house of hip hop, right? So, you know, the BET Awards, how they even came about, you know, and I'm changing the subject, but I'm using BET as an example, right? That the BET Awards came about because the places like the Grammys or the Oscars, you know, the Grammys have been around for a long time, like over 50 years, probably like 50 to 100 years. The Oscars have been around like 70 something years or something like that, right? So it's safe to say that when these publications or when these award shows started out, like let's say the very first, you know, Grammy award show ever or the very first Oscar award show ever happened or started during segregation, right? So that means that there were no black people allowed to even be in the building. There were no black people allowed to sit next to any of the movie stars. There were no black movie stars. <laughs> there were no black artists. There were no black artists that were allowed to sit next to these people in, in the, the very buildings. So now all white people are getting recognition and then black people are not. So the BET or publications like BET came up with their own award show that so that we can recognize our own people, right? I mean, we live in America, right? And let's be real, right? White people, y'all got everything. Y'all got everything in America, okay? Y'all got, you know, Hollywood. Y'all got the whole damn country, right? You know, we only had one black president in the history of our entire country. So that shows you right there who owns America, really, right? We just in it. Y'all own it, right? And it's only been, it's been no female presidents at all during the whole entire history of our full country. So we know who owns the country, really. White men. Right. And so if white men own every damn thing, can niggas have anything? <laughs> you know, I'm trying, I'm making light of this. So I'm trying to be funny about it, but can niggas have something? You know, and we don't even look, we, we, we don't want nothing that you even have. You know what I'm saying? We, we created hip hop. So we just want to keep our hands on something that we made. Right. And at first when hip hop started, you know, and nobody else was even interested in hip hop like that. But now that hip hop is the biggest genre of music in America, which is crazy by the way, because you know, hip hop is so cool and so dope. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. And all that is fine. Everybody can have a piece of the pie, but when you talk about kings, you best not call on somebody that is not from the culture, right? Like, come on. If you give Eminem the crown in hip hop and say that he is the end all, be it all king of hip hop, then that's just like giving hip hop away to white people too. So now, we ain't got shit. <laughs>
you know? And so I feel like that's what Lord Jamar is trying to say. You know what I'm saying? Um, besides all that, y'all know that I work for Lord Jamar. You know what I'm saying? On the You Know What I Mean God casting. Y'all need to have me sitting up here talking shit about my boss. You know what I'm saying? So it's Team You Know What I Mean all day, okay? <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about all this in the comments down below. My last confession. I forgot to tell y'all that I was just bullshitting. <laughs> Man, you a real doc fan. You know I ain't no sign no motherfucking deal, nigga. Fuck wrong. Yo, I cannot with Young Dolph, man. Yo, listen, right? So there's some rappers that, like, I am like, okay, cool. I just watch them. You know, I see what they doing. I look at their social media. I look at the videos. I listen to the music. And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. You know, that's that rapper, right? And there are other rappers that, I mean, like, my favorite, I mean, everybody has something that they like a lot, right? And everybody has something that is, like, their favorite, right? And for me, I don't have, like, one, like, oh, this is my favorite rapper like I got posters of the rap all over my wall and shit but I will tell you this though Young Dolph I have probably and this is like a wild ass number but I <laughs> but I have like probably like 50 favorite rappers right and Young Dolph is one of them right but there's hundreds of rappers out there by the way but Young Dolph is like one of my favorite rappers right um and this nigga is just wildin', man. He's sitting here trolling us, yo. And I don't know what to believe, right? So, you know, the reason why I even like Young Dolph in the first place is because Young Dolph kind of reminds me of, don't kill me, don't kill me, okay? Because what <laughs> Young Dolph kind of reminded me of like Nipsey Hussle, right? Don't kill me, right? And I came out with a video about three months ago talking about Young Dolph, right? And that was before Nipsey Hussle even passed away. So now Young Dolph is saying that, oh, I have a confession to make. I'm not even independent. Then he goes on to say that the record label's holding his album back. Like, you sound like Lil Uzi Vert right now, my dude. Right? You sound like Famous Dex right now, my dude. The album's holding, the record label's holding your album back. What? I thought you could drop whenever you wanted to. Then, oh, I'ma leak it, right? Then he talks about, now that I confess that I signed uh, to a record label and I'm not some big independent artist and I signed four deals, I hope these rappers will stop being mad at me. I hope these rappers will stop hating on me. So the reason why I like Young Dolph is because he's independent. You know, he never signed to any record label. He said that he uh, doesn't need any record label to be hot and he owns his own music. He owns all the masters to his own music and is getting a bigger cut of the pie than let's say uh, Offset because he signed to a major record deal, right? Um, and you know, there are only a few rappers out there who are independent like that or who had that independent crazy ass grind but are still like reaching levels of a same rapper who is basically signed to a major record deal so that rapper is pretty much mass produced, right? You got Troy Ave who is still independent, um, Russ who is not independent anymore but he used to be, right? Um, Nipsey Hussle was independent his whole career until his last album, Victory Lap. And the reason why, you know, Nipsey Hussle decided to sign to Atlantic for his very last album was because he was like, you know, I already reached the height that I wanted to reach. I already showed people how you could do this independently. Um, so now let me sign to a major just so I could reach the masses and really get my story and my situation out there, right? But on a few terms and conditions, right? So even though, you know, he did sign with them, he still kept the rights to all his music and all that stuff, which is fire, which is dope, right? So Young Dolph was on that same wave, right? And then a couple months ago, he came out talking about how, oh yeah, by the way, I lied to y'all. I signed a couple deals, right? I was very disappointed because part of Young Dolph's whole persona is that you were such a dope ass hustler in the streets. You were so knowledgeable in the streets that you took the game that you learned from the, the dope game and, and brought it to the rap game and was able to flourish within that too. 
plus he has good music so you know what the fuck right but then i was like oh man he lied to us my nigga signed blah 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 then he comes out and he talks about no i wasn't signed i was trolling and i was trolling y'all three months ago back then but it's like I don't even know what to believe now, right? Is he trolling us now? Was he trolling us back then? Like, usually if a nigga's trolling you about a day or two after, they would come out and be like, nah, I was just kidding. They're not gonna wait a quarter of a year, like three, four months to come out and be like, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I was just joking. Like, all right, so if he was just joking, then drop the album, my nigga, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, right? But what I do know is that Young Dolph is a funny motherfucker, yo, and he is getting a kick out of trolling everybody uh, it's who, <laughs> you know, is fucking with him, right? He's trolling his fans, he's trolling people that ain't his fans, he back and forth with this shit, but then again, I mean... Look, man, everybody needs to create some kind of controversy or some kind of buzz um, so that people can talk about them, so that they can be in the blogs and the news, so that people can go check out their music, view their videos, stream their music. So who the fuck knows, man? Um, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. So... <laughs> Cardi B says, I don't give a fuck if you a fan or not. My family comes first. I smack the shit out of all of y'all for all of them. Okay, all right. So here's the thing, right? <clears throat> I love Cardi B, right? Um, she is dope, uh, beautiful, talented, all of that, right? Um, but now, you know, Cardi B is known for like saying wild ass stuff, right? And that's part of the reason why people love her persona, right? Because she's all about speaking as if she is not famous at all, as if she never made it out the hood at all. And she's just known for like speaking what's really on her mind and keeping it real. And that's cool because a lot of people, like all the fans and everybody, we can all relate to somebody like that who's gonna keep it straight up real, right? Um, let's not sugarcoat shit. Let's not, you know, package it up in a nice box and tie it up and present it all nicely. Let's just talk really frank about exactly what's going on and exactly how we feel about this situation. And that's Cardi B all day, right? She's a real one. And I, and I know why Offset fucks with her because of that, right? Because Cardi B ain't gonna sit here and hold her tongue for you or tell Offset what he wants to hear. Cardi B is gonna tell Offset what he needs to hear, right? And any strong king, any real man like Offset would want a strong woman, a real queen, like a Cardi B, right? So I get all that, right? But I think that uh, Cardi B missed a step here when she talked like this, right? Because I got friends, right? And I don't wanna bring up Nicki Minaj and compare Nicki Minaj to Cardi B, but you know, I, I will, but not on some female rap type shit, right? Nicki Minaj could be uh, any rapper, but so Nicki Minaj as, as a rapper, right? is also another rapper who likes to talk a lot of shit about people, right? And who likes to stir up controversy about other people, right? Other rappers though, right? So, you know, she will talk the most shit about Drake, right? Even though that Drake is supposed to be her brother, right? She'll talk uh, shit from here to the, tomorrow about Meek Mill, right? Um, Nicki Minaj was, when she came out with her album last summer in 2018, a week after Travis Scott dropped his album, people almost said that, you know, Nicki Minaj was bullying Travis Scott, right? Because she was acting like a straight up bitch because she was basically upset that Travis Scott was using tricks uh, to sell albums and knocking her album out of being number one and knocking her album down to be number two, right? So. Travis Scott, you know, sold a bunch of albums, but then he also did these packages where if you buy concert tickets, it counts as an album sales, or if you buy merch, that also counts as an album sale, right? Um, and so Nicki Minaj was not feeling none of that, 
and she was saying that, oh no, I have the number one album in the country because if you take away all the ticket sales from Travis Scott and all the merch sales, his album sales are really less than mine, right? So basically Travis Scott messed up Nicki Minaj first week sales because he was pulling all those gimmicks. Travis Scott dropped one week before Nicki Minaj though, so he was okay to be number one during that week, but when Nicki Minaj dropped, she was like, hell nah, hell fucking nah, I should be number one, and she was going on every publication, she was going up to Complex, she was on Queen Radio, she was doing all that, letting it be known, screaming from the mountaintop that, you know what, Travis Scott is dead wrong and he's cheating and playing with the numbers, right? Um, and everybody kind of stepped away from Nikki a little bit at that time. I have friends that I personally know that was kind of like, mm, I'm not fucking with Nicki Minaj no more because of what she said or what she did. They're Travis Scott fans. They were Nicki Minaj fans too, but they kind of stepped away from Nicki Minaj because they felt like what she did or what she said about Travis Scott was distasteful, right? But this is crazy because in my head, I always was like, I still fuck with Nicki Minaj, right? Did I think that she was wilding out a little bit when she was talking shit to Travis Scott? Honestly, yeah. And I fuck with Nicki Minaj way more than I fuck with Travis Scott. But honestly, yeah, I felt like she was a little distasteful when she did that. But I kept on fucking with Nicki Minaj though. And the reason why is because and Nicki Minaj never said fuck Johnny Vaseline yet. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, I'm not going to say fuck Nicki Minaj, right? At all. Even if she does say fuck Johnny Fastlane, right? Um, so, that's how I feel. Like, if Nicki Minaj is not personally attacking me, then why should I feel a certain way about whatever Nicki Minaj is saying, right? You know, I'm still a huge fan and I still rock with her. So, I use Nicki Minaj as an example because she never said fuck me right but then i also think about somebody like a kevin gates right who during that whole time like when a lot of black uh men were being like killed uh by the police and uh they were unarmed um kevin gates came out and he was like fuck that shit i see niggas in my hood get shot every day and nobody's marching and protesting for them so fuck y'all and what y'all feel about black uh, unarmed black men getting killed and when kevin gates said that this was a while ago it's like years ago right when kevin gates said that i was like what right so as quiet as it's kept y'all niggas out here boycotting gucci not gucci main but gucci the the uh the clothing brand y'all niggas out here boycotting gucci as quiet as it's kept i've been boycotting uh kevin gates for the last three years real talk right um but that's because kevin gates kind of when i saw that I, I felt like he was saying like fuck me personally right um and so back to cardi b when cardi b puts up this little post on her instagram i feel like she's saying fuck me personally right like people and that's because she doesn't have any kind of filter and that she misspoke but the thing is that Nicki minaj can go ahead and attack anybody that she wants to because they're in the industry and they signed up for this right um travis scott could do the same thing meek mill could do the same thing i don't care if meek mill talks shit about drake and how he didn't write his rhymes and all this even even though Drake is like one of my favorite rappers too, I'm not gonna hate Meek Mill because he talks shit about Drake. Because Meek Mill didn't talk shit about Johnny Fastlane, he talks shit about Drake. And I'm sure Drake could pretty much handle himself, right? I'm sure that, you know, Nicki Minaj talking shit about Travis Scott, Travis Scott can handle himself, right? But we have Cardi B who's saying, fuck her fans, right? Fuck not people that signed up to be in the public eye not people that knows that somebody's gonna talk shit about them because they're doing a whole 20 minute video on youtube talking about motherfuckers so hey you can talk about me because i'm talking about motherfuckers right but she's saying fuck the fans cardi b right and it's random fans it could be somebody who just really likes her music i'll slap the shit out of all of y'all for all of them her family now it's cool for you to love your family more than you love your fans and that's what you're supposed to do but you wouldn't even be able to provide for your fans I mean for, sorry for your family if it wasn't for your fans right so you got to chill right I'm all for like rappers saying fuck this one fuck that one fuck that one fuck this brand fuck that one fuck that I'm all cool with that right but when rappers generally throw out a blanket term out there and they literally say fuck my fans I'll slap the shit out of my fans for my family it's a little bit much right NBA Youngboy is also another one who has always well, not always but I've heard him more than once say and eh, fuck my fans I don't give a fuck about none of y'all I'm rich right but you're rich because of the fans right and Cardi B is kind of on that wave right now 
around with. She's like, I'm gonna snap shit out of my face. I'm sure that maybe she was, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe, you know, they wanted her to be at some kind of thing. And then she was like, nah, hell nah. I want to spend family time. And then she was feeling emotional. And then she goes, you know, fuck my fans. I'm, you know, chilling. But I don't know what it is, right? But whatever it is, uh, she definitely misspoke. And, and this is what I don't like. But I'm going to let Cardi B slide, man, because I fuck with Cardi B. And I think that she literally just, you know, said something wrong one time. I honestly think that Cardi B loves her fans to be honest with you i think that uh she can't get enough of the fans you know what i'm saying and i see how she loves barty gang and she always shouts barty gang out every time she wins an award and she loves the fact that the fans accept her for being her ratchet ass chicken head self you know ow smacking and all that stuff like that it's all part of the package right so with her being so raw so blunt and so blatantly honest cool you get a pass on this one cardi b but you know Chill out. Don't attack your fans. Attack these bitch ass motherfuckers. And at this, on the same token, if Cardi B was to come out and say, fuck Nicki Minaj, that bitch could suck my dick. She's stupid. She, her, her, her raps is garbage and blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't be like, yo, Cardi B is wilding out right now. She said, fuck Nicki Minaj because Nicki Minaj is a public figure and she signed up for that too. You know what I'm saying? But it's just that you can't say fuck your fans. That you can't do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But let me know what y'all think about all this in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure y'all hit that notification bell. Uh, follow me at Johnny Fastlane. That's on everything. That's Instagram and Twitter. J-O-N-N-Y Fastlane on Instagram and Twitter. And y'all already know what to do. <laughs> Peace.